you know all of this, jump down to verse 10. It says, Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Look up. Say snitches. snitches. They were snitching. <laughs> they were snitching. Right? Okay, so verse 12, you're going to see it. Here's the snitch. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy, God, not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. So Nebuchadnezzar, in verse 14, spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? So he's really upset. And he really liked them. So I just need to set that stage. He really liked them. He did not want them to be in this position. But when the snitches came, he had to do something. Y'all got it? Okay. Verse 15. All right, now if you be ready, that are what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but sultry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, it's okay. That's good. That's what he's saying, okay? He says, but if you don't worship, if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So, so if I gave that to you in common day vernacular, it's like, look, let me tell you this, Chantrell, let me tell you this, Sheree, let me tell you this, Tawanda, let me tell you this, Angie, I really like y'all. Mm -hmm. But it's my rep. Okay. 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 And I've already decreed this. Uh -huh. So I'm going to give you another chance. Now, it didn't say that in the, in the first verses. Right. It didn't say if you cut up. He'll give you a chance in front of him. It said that you go, it's going to happen. Right. So that's why he said, but if y'all if y'all, y'all do it, we're good. But if you don't, this very hour, you're going to pay. Y'all yeah. yeah. get that? Yeah. All right. So, so I need that to be clear to you because I need you to know that he meant that thing. Say he meant that thing. Yeah. So verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Look, don't push me. Got it? Verse 17 says, if it be so. What, if what be so, though, y'all? This is what they were saying when they said, if it be so. If you throw us in. Got it? So if you throw us in. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Now, here is where, here is where, here is where the challenge is. Because the average, the average story, this, this story on average is told like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, if God don't deliver us. That's not what he, they were saying. All right, so y'all got if it be so, if you throw us in. All right? Okay, so now let's look at verse 18. But if not, if not what? If you don't throw us in. You got it. If you don't throw us in, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So I need you to understand that clearly. They were battling like champions. Right. So they said, what they were saying, and I'll, I'll help you, because I know a lot of time Elizabethan English can get a little cumbersome. So, so, so common day vernacular. King, if you throw us in, our God's going to deliver us. But if you don't throw us in, I'm still not going to worship your God. Do you get that? So they weren't saying God couldn't deliver them. They knew God would deliver them. 
That's why they could battle like champions. Yeah. I got it set in my heart that you are not going to make me take down from what I already know I believe. And you are not going to have me serve a God that's inferior to the God I've already said that I serve. So you need to understand that they were ready to battle like champions. Yeah. So, 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 so do what you will, I'll still be delivered. But, that, but be it known unto you, I'm not serving your God. I will not worship your God. I'm going to worship my God. I will not serve your God. I'm going to worship my God. And I'm not going to let anybody else think that I'm going to worship your God. You get it. So verse 19, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the, and, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So in other words, now he don't like them. He went from them being cool to now I'm mad at you. Do y'all get that? His attitude changed towards them. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. So I need you to understand the totality of this story because how does Nebuchadnezzar go from liking them, having them over stuff, to saying, I'm going to give you a chance even though I wasn't giving out chances. I'm going to give you a chance because I like you to now I don't like you. It's because they stood strong and battled like champions and would not take down and made sure that he knew that they still were going to serve their God. Do you get it? We know how the story goes. And verse 20, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Now we all know that there was a fourth in the furnace with them. So you got to know that no matter what it is that you're facing, no matter what it is that you go through, you're going to be a real G and stand up and serve the God that you say you serve. That was, too, that, was, that, was that way too secular for y'all? Okay, okay. So there are certain things that champions do. Champions don't abandon because of the enormity. They acknowledge that they need God. No, y'all, that was a big deal. Wait, wait, wait. And then, he, and then he heated it seven times hotter. So I need you to understand that. You know, you know some people will take down for, less, for way less. So, so champions don't abandon because of the enormity. They acknowledge they need God. Champions don't cower under the weight of it all. Rather, they commit to his direction. Say, I will not cower, but I will commit. Champions don't ease away under darkness. Instead, they engage with full confidence. Say, I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm not afraid of the dark. I, fully I fully engage because I battle like a champion. Like a champion. Champions don't grovel at the feet of the enemy, but they give all at, that they have to what they've, they've committed to. So you don't grovel at the enemy. You stand strong and you give what you have to God. You give your best. You just heard that, right? You give your best. You're going to bring your best. You give your best. And then champions don't ignore God. They keep him involved with every aspect. So I don't care what your situation looks like. I don't care how bad it's been. I don't care what you've been through. When you know that God is on your side, you trust him, and you don't allow another situation and circumstance to make you take down. So I don't care where you are right now in your life. God has the opportunity for you to begin winning Right now, it is time for the believers to be in their winning season. So you might as well believe that God has something in store for you to win right now. I wish I had 10 people in this place that knew that God had a winning season in store for them. Yes. 